Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and this channel is all about beauty, fashion and life and particularly for the woman over 40 but there are always gems for you ladies who are under 30 if you're watching. The focus of this video is style tips for women over 40 part two. If you haven't seen the style tips for women over 40 part one, I will link it in this video above right here. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. If you enjoyed this video or video similar to this, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned. Now let's get started. Style tip number one. Now I know in style tips, uh, let's start over. Style tip number one. In my previous video, I told you make certain you get your correct bra size. What I forgot to mention is make sure you tighten your bra strap. There have been so many times I bought bras and just put it on and it just didn't feel really comfortable. I knew the cup was the correct size, but it just didn't feel comfortable. It's because I forgot to tighten the strap. This strap is not made for everybody. That's why it's adjustable. So make sure you tighten your strap. If you're short like me, I'm 5'3 and a half. So that strap is probably made for a woman that's around 5'6, five, 5'7. Five, so it's loose, even though I have perky boobs. If I have a, a bra and the strap is loose, it's just not gonna sit well. See, these straps are tight. Look at them. Look at them girls sitting up on that shelf. This what you want right here. This, quit laughing. This what you want. You want this shelf action. Tighten them straps. Red, it? <laughs> Stop laughing. Yeah, they on the shelf. You see this? These straps tight. <laughs> Style tip number two. I know you see a lot of videos or a lot of women advertising things, how to look 10 years younger, how to look 20 years younger. Listen, don't try to look 10 years younger. Try to look your best. 40 is not the new 20, 50 is not the new 30, but 50 is the new 50. You saw that picture of J-Lo at 50 and the woman that used to be on the Golden Girls at 50, the difference, the difference between the two 50s. Yes, 50 is the new 50. We have access to things that our mothers and our grandmothers did not have access to at 50. We have knowledge about things, anti-aging creams, we have Botox, we have lipo, we have cool sculpting, we have butt lift, not that anybody's getting a butt lift, but um, we have access to all those things that can enhance our life or enhance the way we look or and, and enhance the way we feel that our parents and our grandparents didn't have access to. So try to look your best, not 10 years younger or 20 years younger. When you look your best, you're gonna feel your best and it's just gonna show from the inside out. Style tip number three, when you're purchasing your purses or as we call them in the South, our pocketbooks, try to purchase more structured purses. They look more chic, more sophisticated, more elegant, and they're more timeless than say a hobo bag. And I do like a hobo bag. I love a big deep bag. I can just stuff stuff in. But when you're carrying in that and it's kind of sloppy and kind of bent, it, it doesn't give that air of sophistication, that chicness. It gives a more casual, very, very laid back feel. So if you want to look chic and have a more elevated look, make sure you buy a structured purse. It doesn't have to be a real expensive purse. You can get them in all price points. A great place to get a structured purse is TJ Maxx and Marshall. You can get a designer purse at a really, really good price, but just try to get a more structured purse. It's purses that have corners and edges. I love a purse that has feet on the bottom. That way when you sit it, um, it sits up on the table. That's how you pretty much know if you have a structured purse. If you sit it down and it just stands there or if you, you don't have to lay it down, it just sits there and fall over because uh, we don't put our purse on the floor where I'm from. We don't, we don't do that. So, but anyway, just try to find more structured purses versus a purse that's real soft and, and that will fold when you lay it down. Style tip number four, 
always have you a go-to dressy outfit. You know, as we age or when you're getting this age bracket, sometimes you uh, have an appointment or have a business meeting. You may have to go to a conference, a pastor's anniversary or something. You need to have that go-to dressy outfit, especially if you put it on your calendar and you forgot and you get a last minute reminder from somebody or some one of your girlfriends may call and say, girl, what you wearing to pass this anniversary dinner tonight? You're like, oh Lord, I forgot. And then you're trying to rummage through your closet. Even if you have a, a large wardrobe like I do, you're trying to rummage through your closet, trying to put something together. You're gonna feel disheveled. You're gonna be late trying to get there. You're not gonna feel your best. Your conversation is gonna reflect that. The way you feel is gonna reflect that. So try to have you a go-to dressy outfit. That could be something really simple, like a really nice pair of black dress slacks and a white shirt. Done. And it was just a, a clutch or a nice little purse. Perfect, perfect, easy. Or if you have to think about it, try a monochromatic outfit. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color. It doesn't have to be black on black or white on white or cream on cream. You can do a green and what you do is get you a pair of maybe green slacks and then you can get a shirt a lighter color green or if you're lucky you can find one the exact same color or even green shoes but as long as it's in the same color family it's considered monochromatic and that just looks really sophisticated and really chic and you'll always look put together with that and you can layer that with some simple jewelry like a simple strand of beads and a simple pair of pearl earrings like these these probably were like five dollars from um, H&M, you get these anywhere. I think every lady should have a simple pair of pearls and a simple pair of, uh, a simple strand of pearls. And you don't have to get real pearls. If you can't afford that, that's perfectly fine. Just go to Walmart or H&M or Zara, what have you, and just get that simple strand of pearls. That's gonna always look really chic and sophisticated and it's gonna make your outfit look really put together. Style tip number five, try to stay away from extremely colorful makeup. By that, I mean extremely colorful eye makeup. Two colors are okay, you kind of blend it really well, but when you see, like you have the young girls who do the cut crease, they have the ra rainbow color, and it looks beautiful. It really, really, I think it is so pretty. You know, I love me some color. But when you're older or when you're, you know, a lady, a more mature lady, it just looks like you're trying too hard. So try to steer away from all of the excessive colors. You can do any color. You can do blue, you can do red, you can do green, yellow, whatever. But if you're doing yellow and then red and then a blue, you know, it's just gonna look like you're trying too hard. Like, what was that? Uh, show Mel's Diner. Remember the, the waitress on Mel's Diner? She used to say, eat my, eat my grits. You don't, yeah, you don't remember. <laughs> I never heard of that. She, uh, she used to wear this bright blue eye shadow, and it was cute. Well, it would have been had she been 20. But it just may, it just ages you when you put too much or too many colors on your eyes. Now, that's just my opinion. If you like multicolored eye shadow on your eyes and it makes you feel your best, put it on, ma'am. Walk out the door with your head up and keep it moving. If somebody says something about it and they don't like it, tell them that's your business and just smile and keep going. But if you wanna look chic, <laughs> but if you wanna look chic and sophisticated, then that, that's just not to look for us ladies. <laughs> Tip number six, know what colors look best on you. Most of us can wear any color of the rainbow, but you have to be particular about which hue of color in a particular color looks best on your skin tone. For instance, in my opinion, dark, dark blue does not look its best on my skin tone. I have very warm undertones and a dark, dark blue, most of them are cool colors. So I like more warm colors. I do have one navy blue shirt. Here it is here. Uh, I bought this shirt because I just absolutely love the cut of it. And I will wear this shirt, but it's not what looks best on my skin uh, on my skin tone. This is a very cool blue. And again, I have warm undertones. For example, here's the same shirt, and it's blue and white stripe. Look how much brighter this shirt is against my skin color. It's much more warm, it's much more vibrant. Same cut of shirt, just a different shade of blue. Also, here's another example. You've seen this shirt before. 
This is a turquoise blue. See how bright and warm this shirt is against my skin tone versus this blue. See, this is a warm blue, this is a cool blue. So I like more warm colors. I feel they look better against my skin tone. So you can wear any color in the rainbow, just you have to know which color works best with you. <laughs> Tongue tat. You can wear any color in the rainbow, you just have to know which color looks best with your skin tone and your undertones. Whether it be green, yellow, purple, orange, any color, just you have to know which shade of that particular color looks best with your skin tones. I prefer primary colors. I can wear pastels, but they're not as warm. They are more cool colors, so they don't look as good in my opinion. I could be wrong. In my opinion, they don't look as good. They don't match my energy. <music> Tip number seven. When you're wearing floral prints, you don't really have to go with the condition the conventional theory of... Tip number seven, all of us can wear florals. Conventional recommendation says if you're a woman of a more mature age or if you're older to wear a larger print. In my opinion, the print isn't as important as the cut of the garment. For instance, trust the assistant. <laughs> Here's a skirt. It has very large print. Let me tell you something, this skirt looks looks beautiful. I wore this with a white shirt at a conference. It has pockets and everything. Anyway, this is a very large print skirt. It looks really, really pretty, but I also like small print. See this shirt? See how tiny this print is? But what I fell in love with was the cut of the shirt. Look at the big balloon sleeves. It's just really trendy and it's just very, very feminine. The print is very small. It has really beautiful colors in it. See the pink? and the green and some yellow. So you don't have to focus on necessarily the print or the size of the print. You need to focus more on the cut of the garment and the colors in the prints. Some small prints, if they're all dark colors, they just, they do age you somewhat, but this has bright, vibrant colors in it and it has an amazing cut. So this looks just as fine. It looks beautiful. It looks wonderful. I feel amazing when I wear this shirt. Thank you, assistant. Style, I'm sorry. The <laughs> Spit it out, okay, I'm kidding. The last style tip is if you're having difficulty choosing colors and choosing pieces to match together, if you want to put a nice outfit together but you just have no clue where to start and you don't really have time to go on the internet trying to look up outfits that someone has on and you want to match that kind of outfit, print yourself a color wheel. And I say print because women of my age, we like paper, we like to, we're tactile, we want to feel it, we want to write it on a piece of paper, not on an iPad or anything. Print yourself a color wheel and stick it in your wardrobe. Look at the color wheel and look at the colors. Like if you have yellow and the opposite of yellow is a blue or a pink, you know that those two colors are gonna look really good in an outfit together. They're complementary colors, like red and green, those are gonna look great together. Just whatever color is opposite of that color, those two colors are gonna look amazing together. And also the colors are that are beside each other on the color wheel. So you have yellow and orange, and then it moves to a darker orange and a red. So the yellow and orange outfits are gonna look to great together. Uh, orange and a red outfit is gonna look great together. A pink and a blue, which are side, beside each other, are gonna look great together. And also, it doesn't have to be a dark blue, just the different shades of blue with the different shades of pink are always gonna look nice together. So just look at that color wheel, and it'll, it'll put a little more sunshine, a little more brightness, a little more jazz into your outfit. You'll just be amazed at how great they look and how vibrant they look and how vibrant they make you feel when you're putting your outfits together. And just experiment. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid to put those colors together. Try them on at home to see how you like the way it looks or like the way they feel. And also while you're looking at the colors, it's also important to remember the cut of the outfits you're putting together. If you have something very flowy on the bottom, maybe you want something a little more structured, a little more tailored, a little more fitted up top and vice versa. If you have something bellowy up top, you want to make sure you have something more fitted at the bottom. And if you have, uh, you're showing a lot of skin up top, you cover 
cover up the bottom. If you're showing a lot of leg at the bottom, you cover up the top. You just kind of balance that all with the colors and the cuts of the outfits and you just will never go wrong following that advice. Well, that's it family. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Do you have some style tips I might've missed in this video and the first video? If so, let me know in the comments below. I'm eager and welcome all your feedback, your advice, your comments, whether you don't, even if you don't like the video, that's okay. Just let me know what, let me know what you didn't like about the video. I am open to all of that. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would greatly appreciate your support. I put up videos twice a week, most weeks. I try my best to do twice a week on Sunday, and then I try to do a five minute Friday most of the time. But if you enjoy that content, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to be notified when I upload, you can hit the notification bell and you're gonna email and you know that a video is uploaded. Again, thank you and have a blessed, blessed day. Bye-bye.